Hey y'all, welcome back to the Rat Shack. We are going to continue our HVACR vacuum series tonight with uh, talking about vacuum gauges. Vacuum gauges, micron gauges, evacuation gauges, they about to come by lots of names. And uh, been around for a long time. Necessary uh, when pulling a vacuum to know exactly what level you're at. <clears throat> Uh, largely the scale we use is in the HVAC industry is microns that's one one thousandth of a millimeter and uh, yes it's actually a linear measurement not a pressure measurement and where it comes from is originally we used inches of mercury but because inches are very hard to devise into very small pieces uh, we switched over to the SI side of the house and uh, normally it's given in millimeters of mercury uh, when you see it published in papers and things like that and a micron is just another division of the millimeter it's actually one one thousandth of a millimeter so when we say a micron what we need, mean is a certain number of microns in inches mercury so it'd be 500 microns inches of mercury 500 micron 500 microns of mercury, not 500 microns inches of mercury, that'd be stupid. 500 microns of mercury uh, as reference to atmospheric pressure wherever you are. So, for a long time, and this still holds true today, the device of choice for building rugged, dependable, repeatable vacuum gauges has been the thermistor. There are others out there, uh, the strain gauge and, and a few others that are really more suited for laboratory work uh, and not field work, uh, but there have been some attempts at some of the other kinds of uh, vacuum gauges. They just don't make it. Generally, they're just not rugged enough. So here we have uh, several vacuum gauges. We have a JB. This is the uh, DV22N. We have the Supco VG64. We have the brand new Blue Vac, which we're going to do a full review on. And of course, the Monster, which is the Thermal Engineering Super Vac Check 2 model 14571. What makes a, a thermistor based vacuum gauge good other than it's rugged and you know accurate and repeatable the very good uh, thermistor based vacuum gauges have a in the field calibration protocol and what I mean is for instance on my thermal here my analog this is the actual thermistor the whole sensor comes out of this socket like so and then it just goes back in. You buy a new one, you just plug it in and get it down in the right slot here, right there. Bam, just like that. Now on the thermal side of the house, right here, you'll notice on the flat, you can see it or not, right there. There's a number stamp there. That's the calibration number. So they test these before they leave the factory um, against voltage and temperature and stamp a number on there. And so what you do when you get a new one, and anytime you're using one out in the field, uh, at any time, you can just take this switch right here and flip it down to calibrate. And then you just turn this calibration knob until the needle swings over to the number that's stamped on that flat. So we're at 31.75. So we spin our knob till we get to 31.75. And you can see there's two different scales. Uh, one for atmospheric pressure and micron level and the other one is for just calibration. It's just numbers. It has no bearing whatsoever on anything. Uh, the thermal also is uses 120 volt plug-in or you can see the batteries here. The thing about vacuum gauges that use batteries is um, when the batteries go dead or get low it starts to drift so the good thing about the thermal is is the batteries get low if you're using batteries or you know different voltages you know from 120 to 126 to 150 to 115 you flip the calibration knob you give it a spin and you're back in uh, where you need to be 
The bad thing about the thermal is it's huge. I mean, compared to the blue vac, it's a monster. And uh, for years, this is what we used because it was pretty much the only one out there that was really reliable. Um, but in, in the last years, uh, it only comes out of the truck if I suspect something's going on with, you know, my, my sup code that I carry in the bag with me all the time. So even though it's more accurate, field calibratable, and by and large, you know, a much more accurate and, and better built instrument, it didn't get the field use because it was just too cumbersome. And you either had to have big, big giant batteries or 120 volts. So we come to what I call modern gauges. Up until just a few years ago, this is about what you saw. Supco VG64, again, it's their mister based, same as the JB. The difference is uh, these are not field calibratable. You can't calibrate them in the field. There's no pot, there's no reference, there's no number, there's no nothing. Um, and as a matter of fact, when they cont get contaminated, you don't even know it. You just have to clean them every now and then to make sure it is what it is. Two different types. You can see here, the Supco VG64 has a flow-through design. And uh, it's even uh, tagged on, the, on here so that if you have, you know, uh, auxiliary port and a vacuum port so if you're not pulling through then you cap this one and you pull from here I never noticed any difference in the performance if I did you know pull from here or here without doing flow through but it is what it is pretty good resolution pretty accurate pretty rugged um, not a bad little micron gauge at all but again not field calibratable no temperature uh, display it may or may not be temperature compensated I don't know because there's no display on there JB22, DB22, um, JB's line of everything that has to do with vacuum is DV, Delta Victor, and that stands for deep vacuum. Um, again, they're Mr. Based, different resolution. It does have an auto calibrate on here. It auto calibrates every 10 minutes, which is either good or wildly frustrating because as you're watching it and it starts to auto calibrate or you glance over at it and it says one when it's calibrating, then it's kind of a pain. Um, but it does auto calibrate. The difference is you just don't know, right? There's no reference like on the thermal. There's an actual reference that you calibrate it to so that you know it's calibrated. Again, when it gets dirty, it doesn't know. Um, so you just have to guess. If it's taken forever to pull a vacuum, it could be your oil, it could be your sensor, it could be maybe you have a leak, maybe you still have water. You just don't know because it doesn't tell you. Now, modern. We, we've seen kind of a resurgence in the past couple of years with uh, vacuum gauges that use kind of going back to the old thermal style here I don't have any with me but they basically have a thermistor like this on there yellow jacket has a couple JB even has a new one called the uh, DV-40 and uh, it uses just a thermistor and a wire and it comes back to a head unit that you that you use I know one of the yellow jackets has a number stamped on it at least that you can that you plug into the unit when you first put it on. Um, it doesn't give you anything as far as temperature compensation or um, you know if the batteries start to go dead there's no way to recalibrate it but um, assuming they have temperature compensation built in and assuming that they reference the voltage of their power source um, at least that's a step in the right direction because uh, you know you're entering a number in and you know it's been calibrated at some point to that number or at least checked and uh, when you plug it in it, it's it's good to go so coming to the blue vac this is uh, so coming to the blue vac this is the newest micro grade on the market that I know about anyway uh, guy in Florida builds these or a company in Florida builds these uh, AccuTools and one of the really nice things about the blue vac is it is 100 percent temperature compensated anytime the temperature changes the vacuum gauge itself uh, updates its reference so any anytime anything happens it's it's going to be accurate uh, it also does a couple of other pretty cool things it has um, one it has an alarm. You can set it for say 500 microns. Go do something else. When it 
when it gets below 500 microns, it'll sound an alarm. There's also a, it's also a time weighted. So you can set it for say 500 microns for 15 minutes and the alarm will not sound until it's been below 500 microns for 15 minutes total. So if it gets below 500 microns for seven minutes then it jumps back up and then it goes back and back, it stops the timer anytime it's above 500 microns. Anytime it gets back down below, it starts the timer, not at zero, but at where it left off. So that you know you have a full 15 minutes below 500 microns. Um, it also has two levels of sensitivity, sensitivity as far as uh, contaminants. It will tell you that the sensor is contaminated, but it's okay to keep using it. And it will tell you the sensor is contaminated and it's not okay to keep using it. You need to stop and clean it. Very cool. Has a timer function on it so that you can uh, do a drop test once you reach your uh, absolute. Uh, vacuum level or your target vacuum level you start the test and the timer starts and it'll tell you uh, how long it's been there and and uh, at, at the vacuum level so it's a very cool very cool micron gauge of course it does all the popular units um, has a nice backlight on it you can see very cool very cool little gauge, super, super accurate. The other thing is, you can turn the beeps off if you want. Um, the other thing is that, that the blueback is temperature compensated and it shows you the temperature right on the face. So you see right there, it says 86.9 degrees. I mean, it's super, super sensitive too. You just put your finger, you know, your hand down here and you can watch that thing go up. I mean, it's very, very sensitive to uh, temperature changes. And, uh, but again, it's temperature compensated. It knows it and it will uh, adjust the display based on that. Super, super accurate, very good resolution. Uh, one tenth of one micron once you get down into the lower ranges. And this is field calibratable. You can calibrate this in the field or at home very easily um, not as easy as the thermal but very close you pop it in the freezer wait for it to get down to temperature and then go through the calibration protocol in the book and it's uh, back into calibration now a guy that builds these on the forums his name is Joey D I think his real name is Dennis but uh, super smart guy really loves what he does you can tell when you talk to him on the phone and uh, you know in talking to him these things are within two uh, one to two to three percent of his three thousand dollar NIST calibrated vacuum gauge that he tests these against and he's got some videos up of that and some and some stills as well so this is going to be the one we're doing the uh, review on today